Hi everyone, I just wanted to give you a tour of my garden and to show you some things that are working out well and things that eh, could need a little help. So I'm just gonna pan over here. So along this barn here, I have um, various gourds growing and I'll add another layer of this green um, trellising once they get a little bit taller. So they're in the ground. I didn't do a raised bed there, I'll risk the gophers. And I've just sort of mulched it with some uh, straw that I have and it's on drip so they're they're starting to take off so something that happens when you plant is here I'll use this as an example here a lot of times I get this question a lot of times you plant plants will go through this sad phase where it looks almost like they're dying just you know water them as you will and then soon you know they'll just put on new leaves and start growing so sometimes they just go through a little sad adjustment phase a lot of plants will do that so i'm going to pan over and show you um, the bulk of my garden here you can see um i had joe so i don't really need a fence because i don't have deer but i wanted something to sort of delineate the space and i had joe um weld flowers and now he probably hates me but he also added little leaves on them too and I didn't even ask so we just took rebar and of course this is pipe and then he actually hand bent all that metal he heated it with the torch and hand bent it he's very strong and then he actually bent those and welded those on and we had actually stick weld the flowers on out here because we don't have a, a welder with a long enough extension cord or something I don't know something like that and then so there's the rope and then here's my entrance i found these half poles at an antique sale pretty cheap and that's an old remnant from an old house so i like it i may post paint the posts not sure and as we walk in um i did a video on the raised bed so these are open in the bottom with some it's called hard uh wear cloth it's not really cloth it's just a very uh, sturdy chicken wire very small holes so gophers can't get to it and I have a drip and this is drip tape you can see that when it's it's flat when it, there's no water going through it and there's slits in it so it's uh, a cheaper version than inline emitter so I did a mix, I'm doing a mix of flowers and vegetables, because why not? Of course, if you have flowers, it's going to bring pollinators in, of course, be beautiful as well. So in this bed, uh, there's calendula, which I said I would never ever plant in my yard because it is an invasive, can be invasive and weedy, but I fell for this, for this color right here. Normally it's a darker orange. And then I have cosmos, and then I have chard, which can be a warm and cool season and can live more than one season. So if you have chard, don't pull it out. Of course, sunflowers. Um, peppers, and it looks like I've already have some peppers forming. Um, remember, even if you have flowers, don't expect fruit necessarily on your tomatoes and peppers and eggplants right away. They may flower, but the plant may not just be sturdy enough to uh, produce quite yet. But then if you're uh, it's still producing flowers and no fruit, for tomatoes, remember to shake it. Uh, peppers as well and then of course hand pollinating squash and I posted a video on that um, so that's one bed and over here are tomatoes and someone asked about tomato cages this is concrete wire that have just been soldered I know people who need to save space will just zip tie them together but they are about five feet tall I've had these for about 15 years um, and you can see that I don't really I just removed the first few suckers off of my tomatoes at the bottom and I just let them grow. And I just sort of shove them in and uh, let them grow and they'll grow all the way to the top. So it's not a must that you uh, constantly thin and remove the suckers off your tomatoes, especially if you're lazy like me. And then I also have some peppers and then some uh, spaghetti squash. Let's see what I have here. Uh, this is a pimento. So. This year, I actually, my new rule is if I could find the variety that I want, I won't grow it by seed because um, why not? I want to utilize my time and space for varieties that I know I can't find at nursery. So a lot of peppers I started, some tomatoes I started, um, but the majority I sort of just bought already. Um, let's see over here. So here's, here's a problem 
this is a problem. See, I, even I have problems. Um, plant problems. Of course, I got other problems. Uh, thrips. So let's see if I could show you some thrips damage. So thrips, I always have to deal with at work. Um, they are sort of a scraping, sucking insect. They're elongated. And I'm just looking for some. Here we go. I don't know if you could see right, maybe right there. So what you're gonna see more so is their damage, which causes more of a silvery appearance. And now I've sulfur dusted on these, so it's a little hard. But if you have a silvery appearance on your leaves, I'll look under the leaf and you'll probably see these long uh, elongated black insects. In fact, you could sort of see some of the silvery right here, possibly. So I don't know if this one's gonna make it. I uh, did some sulfur dust. Then on other ones, I did some soap spray. And I'll come back again. I've never had thrips as a problem on my tomatoes. I know it could happen. But hey, it's the first. Um, everything else is looking good over here. More peppers. Uh, tomatillos, remember, tomatillos, you need two. Unlike tomatoes, they don't self-pollinate. You need two of them together to cross-pollinate. Uh, two will do just fine. But yes, so you need uh, multiples for tomatillos. Let's see, we got some squash going over there. And over here, more peppers. These are the Spanish peppers that I get every year from Gloria Lopez in winters. Her, I did a whole podcast on it. Her family uh, brought the seeds over in the early 1900s and she's been growing them um, every year since then. I let her collect the seeds and germinate them. Much easier than me collecting the seeds. <laughs> so, and then we're gonna go over to this area over here. So this area here, I've got an arch here with wire and I have a um, got the dwarf or mini kiwis. So this will be the perennial plant. In the meantime, I have some beans. They're going through a little adjustment. I don't know what about beans. Sometimes when the temperature cools down, they do a little weird leaf curl. I ignore it and they usually do just fine. I do have tomatoes. This tomato and then a few others, I'm going to just do uh, one main uh, stem. So that means all the suckers that are coming out between here, I'm pinching. So it's going to be this just one main leader um, all the way up. So I just uh, did a podcast with quarter acre no mule, uh, David Art, and he's doing all of his tomatoes like that on uh, bamboo. And a lot of people do. Just requires being vigilant. This tomato over here is a dwarf see here it is Tasmanian chocolate and it's determinate remember determinate means it gets to a certain size and supposedly sets X number of fruit but two to three feet tall so there we go and then let's see over here of course old farm equipment you got to incorporate here's some basil verbena bonariensis which can also get quite weedy my last garden, I said I would never have it, but of course, it's so pretty. Um, got some strawberries, and I got these, you know, some peppers that are just, you know, chugging away. And then over here, have snapdragons and chamomile, some oregano, some cosmos, um, eggplants. Looks like they're flowering. Another dwarf tomato. Here's uh, my ground cherry, which actually is a weed where I planted it uh, the last few years, but hopefully it's going to drape over. And over here are these nice trellises that a uh, friend of mine made. I like them. They're for my cucumbers. So cucumbers here, cucumbers here, um, more basil. And over here on this archway here, I'm doing butternut squash and it's just really starting to to take off and go hopefully up and over because I have the same variety over here and here more cucumbers we got the tree tomato it is a perennial but it's frost sensitive so in the winter I will have to cover it um, let's see just some random utilize that old farm equipment into a bed some old gourds and then over here I'll have hopefully the gourds up. I have a thing for gourds. I don't know why. They're just strange. 
then in here, this bed gets hot, as you can see, because it's metal. And this, this is a wasabi. So let's see if that actually amounts to anything. But yeah, it's, it's warmer in here. And then this is a snake bean, which I grew a couple years ago, which you harvest when it's young and tender. And then you can see some gourds there, my gourd tree over there. Um, and then we'll go, hopefully I'm not making you dizzy. We'll go out into the ground bed, which is really just a hodgepodge. Um, so beans are going. And then back there are zuka gourds that will just take over the whole area. And then in here I have a mix of sunflowers and melons. Some of these melons popped up on their own and I know they'll come true because they're heirloom varieties and those ones will are allowed to be open pollinated and will come true to seed. Um, but if you had hybrids and you had some melons and squash popping up, remember you're not necessarily gonna get what you had last year. So be careful about that. Um, there were some varieties I didn't wanna plant last year that I'm sure maybe have popped up. Um, I'm trying to, one thing I am trying to do with melons is possibly go less heirloom because the seed count. That is one good thing about hybrid melons and watermelons. So there's my potatoes I did a video on. Um, corn, I'm going to try to push the limits and see how much corn I could get for a small amount. But I think I'm going to do, um, maybe try to eke out some more space and do some more corn. And then, uh oh, look at over here. Gopher activity. That's new. Uh, bad gophers. Bad, bad. Come on, kitties. Where are you? Do your thing. Um, so, yeah, I'll turn around here slowly. Um, so that's it. So really the only problem I'm having is the thrips, but hopefully I'll get it under control. And some of my seed grown peppers that I started are a little pokey, uh, slow, but hopefully I didn't plant them too soon. That's what happens sometimes when you plant eggplants and peppers. Sometimes it could take a while to get them going. And I, I definitely push the boundaries of uh, starting my peppers a little too early this year so but the ones in in these beds are doing just fine so here i'll show you show you my my sparkly gourds i don't know if the sparkles will show through but yeah so hopefully that helped if you have questions remember you could always i'll let you post them on this thread and i'll get to them but one more pan there's my soap spray there it is Ooh, hopefully you're not dizzy and there you go